number one. I'll note that this is the first of uh, two public information centers that we're going to be holding uh, for this study. The second one is scheduled for Q1 of 2024, so keep an eye out for information about that as we approach the, the date. Uh, for today's session, we have a presentation which will introduce the study and provide some preliminary analysis that uh, and results that we've that have been completed to date. Uh, this will be followed by a Q and a live Q and A session and an opportunity for you to uh, voice your concerns or or provide any feedback that you may have. Um, I'll note that the presentation is being recorded, so please be mindful of how much personal information you decide to share in uh, during the Q&A session. Uh, we'll, of course, uh, mo moderate it before posting things and posting it to, uh, uh, for the public. Um, I'd like to start by thanking everyone for joining us today. I'll also like to acknowledge uh, Councillor Silovitz for joining us and thank her for taking time out of her busy, busy schedule. Uh, from the city side, we have uh, myself, Attila Hertel. I'm a transportation engineer and the project manager for this study. Uh, I'll also pass it over to uh, Dan Terzievsky, who, would, who is the uh, director of uh, infrastructure planning and development engineering. How are you? Um, just want to thank everybody for joining us this evening. Um, I think this is a very important uh, first step in this environmental assessment process with respect to the extension of Addison uh, Avenue, uh, which is an important linkage that has been identified through the uh, city's official plan, transportation master plans. Um, so just happy to have you here and uh, excited to have this project team on this file. I'm going to pass it over to Hubert Ding, our manager of transportation and traffic, uh, to take you through uh, a little bit of an introduction of the project and uh, to introduce the rest of the project team. Hi everyone, good evening. I'm Hubert Ng, Manager of Transportation and Traffic at the City of uh, Richmond Hill. And uh, maybe we'll uh, continue the introductions with our consultants, our CADIS IBI group and uh, Margaret. Thanks Hubert, good evening everyone. My name is Margaret Parkhill. I'm a Director of Transportation Engineering at Arcadis IPI Group and the Project Manager for the consultant team supporting the city on this adventure. Uh, next, I'll turn it over to Stefan. Hello, everybody. My name is Stefan Suriani. I'm a senior transportation engineer with our KSIBI, and uh, today I'm also the consultant deputy project manager for the study. And today I'll be walking through the uh, presentation with everybody. Um, great. I will proceed to the next slide then. Um, so just a couple housekeeping items before we get started today. Um, you'll notice when you joined um, that all attendees will be muted and not be able to use their microphone or camera during the presentation. Um, there will, however, be an opportunity at the end of the presentation to ask any questions or submit comments. Um, we'll go over this again at the time, but you can do so using the Q&A icon you'll see at the top of your screen, uh, shown in green in the image below. You can also raise your hand um, as seen there to ask questions for the presenters to answer. So they'll be screened by the project team before uh, they're posted or responded to. Um, if you've happened to join us by phone today and you wish to provide verbal questions, comments, uh, you can do so by pressing star five on your phone's number pad and then star six on your microphone when prompted. Um, it's a reminder as well that if you'd like to submit your, your feedback at a later time, the today's presentation materials and an online comment form will be available on the project webpage, uh, richmondhill.ca slash addisonea. Uh, just a reminder to everybody to please remain uh, courteous to your fellow participants tonight. Um, the city at the end of the Q&A session will have the, um, I guess, power to unmute unmute attendees um, as you raise your hands. Um, so they'll be kind of moderating that portion of the presentation. Uh, so before we begin uh, today's presentation, I'd just like to acknowledge that the uh, lands we're gathering on have been home to First Nations people from time immemorial. We acknowledge that what we now call Richmond Hill is on the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and Mississauga and Chippewa Nations of the Williams Treaty. Uh, we also recognize that we are part of the traditional territories of the Haudenosaunee and huron wendat We'd also like to acknowledge all First Nation, Inuit, and Métis peoples from across North America, also known as Turtle Island, who now reside in the city of Richmond Hill. We are committed to rebuilding constructive and cooperative relationships. Uh, so just a brief overview of today's agenda and the purpose of today's PIC. 
Um, we've started off with the introductions and welcomes. Um, next, I'll go over a study overview and existing conditions, uh, followed by the alternative cross sections that we've developed to present tonight, um, followed by study schedule and next steps. And then at the end, we'll conclude with a question, an open ended question and comment period where you'll have the opportunity uh, to raise your hand and uh, also submit written questions uh, to the project team. Um, so as was noted, the purpose of today's PIC is to provide an overview of this Addison Ex Street Extension uh, study and review the study purpose and existing conditions. Um, we, the project team that's in attendance does want to hear from you. Uh, your input on the roadway cross sections that we present tonight uh, will be used to confirm the preferred design for the extension moving forward. So the study area, um, as you can see on the graphic to the right, um, is characterized by low rise residential units to the west of the proposed extension and higher density commercial and air retail areas to the east. Uh, it's located just south of Major Mac uh, to the west side of Young Street. And for the purpose of this study, it's been split into two levels of analysis. So we'll be looking at a more focused area, the transportation study area, where alternatives for a future Addison Street alignment extension will be developed. And then the broader um, MCEA study area, uh, which is where the environmental study and potential impacts will be looked at um, more broadly. Um, this study is following the, the Ontario class environmental assessment process and will complete phases one to four of a Schedule C planning process. So the final deliver deliverable for that uh, will be an ESR that will be placed on the public uh, record for a 30 day review and comment at the end. Uh, we're currently at phase two, which is where we're developing alternative solutions for the study and uh, what we'll be seeking feedback on tonight. So uh, this study, uh, the overall uh, vision for it is to extend Addison Street south to Welgic Road from where uh, it currently terminates. Um, this was proposed first in the city's official plan, which identified the need for a new roadway parallel to Young with a 20 meter right away. Um, as you can see here, the extension is intended to accomplish four kind of key areas. Uh, the first being improving the local road network and neighborhood connectivity, uh, but providing that uh, secondary road uh, access. Also to establish local boundaries for development and support growth in the area, uh, while also adding transportation capacity and new access opportunities, um, as well as providing new active transportation facilities and opportunities for transit in the process. Uh, through the study, we'll be selecting a preferred design alternative for the Addison Street extension uh, that will then be carried forward to detail design and construction. And we'll also be preparing a preliminary design of the preferred alternative. Um, that will be looked at in further detail at PIC number two as well. Um, I'll also note that the study is also considering uh, the Young and 16th major transit service area just to the south. Um, is located immediately to the south uh, within like an 800 meter radius um, per the province's growth plan. These MPSAs um, represent about a 10 minute walk and are intended to be developed as mixed use transit supportive communities that provide local access to amenities, jobs and housing to meet the daily needs of residents and support future development. So I'll now provide just a brief overview of the existing conditions work that we've completed to date. So at a high level, uh, four kind of key areas were looked at for this study um, and continuing to be assessed as we move forward. Uh, first, these being socioeconomic environment, so things like um, inventory of existing and future land uses and community needs, uh, as well as cultural environment, the natural environment, and traffic and transportation. I'll be going into a little more detail on each of the next few slides as well. So the uh, the first of these, socioeconomic environment, um, as I noted before, most of the study area consists of stable low rise res residential uses uh, to the west, uh, but significant intensification, as I'm sure many residents are aware of, is being seen along Young Street. Um, with eight, eight active developments in particular identified within 500 meters of the study area. Um, so some just general observations. The population is uh, generally getting older in the area. Housing stock is very diverse with the higher percentage of apartments, um, as well as the median uh, income is generally lower than across the city and commuting pa patterns are slightly less auto oriented, um, which is well serviced by the BRT on Young Street. Uh, so just as I go through all these panels, we have these kind of little information bits in the corner just to kind of prompt some uh, questions for the public um, as you're hearing today's presentation. Um, 
steps, you know, around like how does this inform the project and the understanding you can gain from it as well. So uh, next, the natural environment. Uh, so although this area is already quite developed with residential and commercial uh, uses, um, there is a prominent natural heritage feature being the Patterson Creek Valley lands um, within the western portion of the study area. There's also a smaller tributary, as you can see on the map to the right um, of where this is located. Um, there's also some smaller wooded areas um, that we're exploring further through field investigations, um, and this will continue through the throughout the study as well as we develop alternative alignments. So next, um, a very important part of this project is our traf traffic and transportation review. Um, so existing traffic con conditions, as you can see on the right here, we've uh, posted um, current uh, average daily traffic volumes within the study area for key locations. Uh, the dotted line is meant to just be um, a high level interpretation of where the alignment may go. Um, it's by no means um, indicative of anything further than that. Um, I will say though that in the future, traffic is expected to grow due to development along Young Street, and the extension of Addison will allow for the redistribution of this traffic um, off of Young and from other side roads as well. Um, in general, traffic volumes along Young are projected to increase by 1.5% over the coming years, while Addison itself will increase by 2%, um, accounting for the redistribution of traffic. So this next little phase here, I'm going to go over the development of alternatives, specifically the cross-section alternatives um, that we've looked at in the first phase of this study. Uh, so begin, before beginning the development of these, um, looking at the existing conditions information that we've gathered to date, uh, we've identified a few key problems and opportunities that can be addressed through the, the alternatives we're developing. So as it stands today, there's extensive new and approved development um, along Young Street, as well as planned ones coming in the future. And the existing ro uh, road network does not provide adequate capacity to meet these growth needs, uh, both for vehicles, as well as active transportation and pedestrians. Um, through this study, there's opportunity to both establish the limits of intensification boundaries, so kind of delineating between the lower, res lower residential uh, areas to the west and development along Young Street. It also <laughs> provides an opportunity to create a finer grid network to improve this capacity and access for both residents and businesses and future growth, and also provide equitable access along the corridor uh, for people using other modes as well, not just vehicles, but um, active transportation and transit. So the first phase of this study that we're uh, kind of getting into today is the development of cross-section alternatives. So before you proceed with uh, uh, coming up with conceptual alignments for the study corridor, uh, we really wanted to kind of get the public's feedback today um, on what this corridor will look like, what elements will be included in it. Um, as I noted before, the official plan identified a 20 meter right of way for Addison, extending from existing Addison Street south to Welgic Road. So as you can see there on the graphic to the left, um, essentially connecting point A and point B um, through that area. Uh, the city's official plan identified that this road would have two vehicle travel lanes, so one northbound, one southbound, as well as active transportation facilities, um, to connect existing and planned routes as well as transit facilities um, like bus stops. Um, and may also include things like laid by parking and in boulevard landscaping. So the alternatives that you'll kind of see today will uh, contain a range of these features and uh, your feedback on them uh, both during and after this PSC is greatly appreciated. So just at a high level, uh, the study is looking at five uh, typical cross-section alternatives. Um, the first of these two are based on the city standard for urban collector roads. So these are published in the city's um, official plan and other documents. Um, so these are based on, um, as you can see here, in Boulevard, in Boulevard cycle tracks on both sides of the road. Um, alternative one would include lay-by parking and alternative two would, uh, would not, but also include uh, room for more plantings and wider boulevards. Um, alternative three would have uh, on-road bike lanes on both sides with two travel lanes um, and then sidewalks um, outside of the, the vehicle right away. And alternative four would be in boulevard by directional cycle tracks on the east side only um, and sidewalks on both sides. And alternative five would be a multi-use path on the one side only 
um, with sidewalks on the west side. So I'll go over some just cross sections here to help you visualize it. I know images are sometimes a little easier to help paint a picture. So as you can see here, uh, this is existing Addison Street. So what terminates at Addison Street to the north currently? Um, it ends about 600 meters south of Harding Boulevard. So as you can see today, um, it's two travel lanes with wide boulevards and sidewalks on each side. Um, through the study alternative one, we're looking at here, as you can see, um, maintains the two travel lanes, um, but also includes an opportunity for parking, um, as well as cycle tracks on both sides and sidewalks, uh, with some space available for uh, in boulevard plantings. Um, again, uh, for those that are curious and looking at these in further detail, they will be posted um, online after today's PIC, and we can also cycle back to them during the Q&A period if anybody wants to look at these uh, for reference purposes. So alternative two in comparison, um, as I noted before, removes the parking lane or um, the, the considers having more in boulevard plantings instead. Um, through the study, there's of course an option to look at like a hybrid version across all these alternatives as well. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the cross section remains consistent across, um, but these are just kind of the details and um, I guess features that we're looking to incorporate and get your feedback on. Alternative three being the on-road bike lanes on both sides. So you can see here, uh, this involves a much larger paved area with bike lanes on the roadway itself. Um, this does, however, limit the amount of uh, boulevard space avail available for plantings as well. Um, alternative four, bi-directional -direct cycle track on the east side. Um, so two lanes of travel, but instead completely delineating cycling and pedestrian traffic from the main vehicle right away. And then uh, alternative five being a multi-use path on the east, so a much wider area that's shared by all active transportation users um, on the one side, and then a sidewalk with plantings uh, to the west. So through the first phase of this study, what we've done is we've kind of done a roundup on the, the key considerations across each of them and just kind of rank them holistically as like the most preferred preferred or not preferred from varying perspectives. So um, as I noted before, the existing conditions re review we conducted looked at a, a couple of different key environments to consider. Uh, this evaluation uh, looks at those um, to a degree and also considers kind of the main criteria for cross sections. So things like provision of walking and cycling facilities, as well as capacity for those facilities. Uh, so the difference between let's say an on-road bike lane versus a an off-road bi-directional bike lane. Uh, it also considers things like trees and boulevards, so the ability for placemaking and tree planting in that process, as well as on-street parking and the overall maintenance needs of the corridor. Um, uh, so through this process, um, you can see here that alternatives one and two, the ones that are uh, based on the city's urban collector standards, um, have been identified as preferred and more and most preferred from this criteria evaluation. So. Um, They'll, through this process, we are looking to carry forward both of these alternatives in tandem. Um, as I mentioned before, that would mean looking at elements from each um, and where they can be applied throughout the corridor, um, depending on the surrounding context. So um, I'll just go over some uh, next steps in the, in the study before I hand it over to Attila in the Q&A session. I know the part that everybody's kind of eager to um, ask some questions and provide some comments on. Um, so following today's PIC, um, we will be reviewing feedback from the public that we get today, both uh, verbally and written comments during today's P presentation, mm -hmm. as well as those we receive online um, after today's PIC. The comment period for PIC 1 will be open for approximately two weeks. Um, but after that, you can also you can submit comments at any time to the project team as well, um, both by email and through the project website. Um, so after today's PIC, we'll be doing that and also consulting other stakeholders in the process, um, like local uh, property owners, other agency groups, like things like uh, uh, Richmond Hill Fire um, and services like that. Um, and then through the remainder of the fall and winter, upcoming winter, we'll be developing and evaluating uh, alignment alternatives for the extension. So taking the feedback we get today to refine the cross sections and apply those cross sections to develop uh, an alignment for the extension. And then following that, um, and 
later in the winter, we'll be hosting public information center number two to present these alternatives and our selection of the preferred alignment. Um, and then from there, we'll be carrying forward with the preliminary design of this preferred alternative. Um, following feedback that we get from the public, it'll be refined and then uh, documented further. Um, at which point we'll be submitting an ESR for a 30 day public review uh, by next summer. And following completion of this EA study is when detailed design and construction of the Addison Street extension will begin and that'll be carried out over the next few years. So um, I'll now pass it over to Attila to moderate the question and comment period. Um, I'll just have a quick reminder for everybody about how the functionality of this works. Uh, so again, if you're joining on a mobile device or computer, um, you can use the Q&A or raise hand feature to either submit a written question or raise your hand to submit a verbal question. Uh, they'll then be screened or we can address one by one. The city will kind of uh, select uh, people who have the ra raised hands or submitted questions to provide responses. And again, if you join by phone, you can use star five to raise your hand. And then once you've been um, selected, you can press star six to unmute your microphone and, and provide your comments. Great. Thank